and we inherently sort of imply or read in narratives and plots and everything into anything that's moving. Um, so, you know, so as soon as you have two objects that are sort of moving towards each other, away from each other, um, there's a story, you know, and, you know, the, the stories, as I mean, it is, is very performative and sort of very symbolic. So it's more like a little uh, till almost, you know, like an arrangement, like a tableau, like an arrangement of things that suggests a story. Um, but all the elements in it are sort of uh, balanced against each other. So any any behavior, any movement of any one of these elements causes the other elements to uh, behave in a certain way or, or shift or respond to it and changes the entire situation. So, mm -hmm. um, Well, I think that one of the reasons that this kind of rendering works um, in, in these cases is because it really relies on the suspension of disbelief, um, because the less something is made realistic, the more you're relying on the person to sort of fill in the details and uh, they're not only filling in the details of the imagery, but also of the persona behind it, and the um, you know they're interpreting their behavior in that way as well. So I think that is not you know it's not about visual representation. It's not about descriptive representation. You know, like it would be in the writing or in imagery. It's about representation that is a dynamic and sort of uh, it represents the system of the elements and the relationships between those and um, and then the the metaphor sort of is uh, is embedded in that in in how does elements relate to each other yeah well well, it's okay. So it's hard not to see it as a journey, <laughs> because it is it's it's re represented as a journey. But I think you know, for me, it's something where there is a movement forward, which is an Im important, and then there is um, you kind of there is the prescribed, idealized thing, and then there is how the world pushes back on that thing, um, and and the reality that sits sort of in between the, that's created from the interaction of the two um, is um, the, all the kind of forces that are completely invisible to us and, and are much larger or sort of smaller and uh, complicated than, than we can discern or observe. And, but we have evidence of all that that's happening in what, the behavior of the surface. And that's kind of like a mediation layer that a lot of what we understand about the world or about culture, about, you know, uh, sort of like our cultural constructs of what the world is, is like a surface like that, where, you know, it is something understandable or a layer that we understand in some way of all those larger things happening and re relating to each other. And it's, I just think it's really, awesome to think of like how how much there is to everything you know that there is it's just a small part that you know you're determining <laughs> and there is so much uh more that that the result of what's happening is the result of um, all these different people's actions and things that happen to you but you know things that you do but things that also happen um I, you know, I, I don't know if it's, I think that's an intuition everybody has to some degree. I don't know if uh, working with game engines particularly <laughs> changes my everyday consideration of that, but. Yeah, but it's very humbling. Things, because things are, there's, you know, elements more or a few that are keep each other in balance and they achieve some kind of equilibrium where uh, things are still, but it's kind of a deceptive stillness because uh, there's a lot of energy involved uh, of these things pushing against each other. Um, it's just like I've been to several of these panels, um, art panels. I'm sure you know you've seen the same thing happen where everybody's kind of in their own head and they're, they've already had this thought, lots of thoughts about whatever the topic is that they're talking about. And, you know, there's a person saying something and then another person latches on 
to one little part of that what that person is saying kind of takes it in the direction that clearly they've already had a whole lot of dialogue and a lot of you know thoughts about um so similarly as with the pencil there's a part that goes into designing create or create part of creativity that goes into making the tool and then part of the creativity that goes into using the tool um and i guess but in in that case, you know, if you share the tool, sort of the that process splits midway, and then it kind of fosters all these new directions that this that uh, things can be used. These tools can be used, um, even though there's already creativity. So there, it's already the process, you know, of whatever the final pieces be is already kind of collaborating with somebody who's created the tool to begin with to some to some degree. So. Um, it, you know, I think there's the, the, there's a lot of work that's created from from that process, and that's possible by by you know by people making these tools. And so, say we're the idea is that we 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 both collaborate in sort of designing of the tool, or like the ideas that go into that, because clearly it's designed to be used in a very specific way, um, and. I mean, you know, there's so much that happens in, in, you know, because there's an idea that, like, the bigger idea that's that's there, that's kind of your what you the goal of what you're trying to make, but then the practical details of how it's made and what's being made um, make you so you have to communicate, and to communicate you have to articulate all these things that you have that are assumptions that are completely unfounded sometimes. <laughs> but you know, and then talking about these assumptions and sort of articulating your thoughts and articulating what what you're doing and what you're working on and what it you know it, it brings this thing into being. Um, and I think that's a vocabulary that kind of then finds its way into how you think and how you talk about your work. Um, so you know so it's a process of things being literally created, being born, like the ideas that that are in the piece itself. It's not only, but you know, and then talking about these assumptions and sort of articulating your thoughts and articulating what what you're doing and what you're working on and what it you know it, it brings this thing into being. Um, and I think that's a vocabulary that kind of then finds its way into how you think and how you talk about your work. Um, so, you know, so it's a process of things being literally created, being born, like the ideas that, that are in the piece itself. It's not only a lot, and then every person is different, right? And so, so um, working with every, collaborating with different people is very, kind of, you develop that communication process and the language and, um, and, you know, shared understanding of things, which is, is, yeah, you know, just like there's a lot of shared understanding and knowledge that you kind of arrived at together. I mean, I, I, mean, I, I haven't really, I mean, I haven't seen that many performances, especially like all of that work that was done in the 70s and, and, and later on that like it brings in a whole different era to it, right? And it's a, like a different experience. But, if, you know, that kind of discomfort and um, feel, awkward feeling, I think, is a part of it. Um, and 